Hi, I'm Bill Gord. I'm a storyteller. And today with me is Mernam Rastagari playing the Kamancha, which is a Persian instrument. So we will tell a tale, a Persian tale called Paranaz and the Golden Lamp. When Paranaz's mother died, her father said, Paranaz, I have an idea. I think this will work. You see, I have a friend, you know, an old friend, old friend, and he's rich. And you can marry him, and then everything will be fine. Right? What do you think? And she said, I don't like that idea. And he said, well, that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. I don't know why I even asked you what you think, because that's what it's going to be. But Father, that, that, that's not what I want. Paranaz, your mother's gone. You need someone to take care of you. My old friend is rich, and he will take care of you. Paranaz left the room. Her father began to think about it and thought, oh, that Paranaz, she seems a little, oh, I don't know what she might do. There could be some trouble. I know. She needs to stay in this house until she is married. That is the way to make it work. Let her stay on the grounds, of course. And he told her that. And she said, Father, really, really, until you're married, you will stay here. And that's what she did. That's what she did. I mean, she could go out in the, in the courtyard. She could go and get a little water out of the well or go inside and talk to the servants. But that was it. And wait, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And she thought about it. And she thought about it. And she got an idea. She said, Father, Father, if, okay, okay. If I have to stay here all the time and I'm going to have to marry your, 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 your friend, if I have to do that, will you do one thing for me? Can I, will you, will you, will you, will you get a golden lamp made for me, a special one. I have a special one in my mind. I can picture it already, and it would make me happy. And I'm inside anyway, and then I could look at it and watch it glow, and what kind of lamp? A golden lamp, I want a golden lamp. And, and the stand will have to hold 40 lamps. Wouldn't that be amazing? And that would make me happy, Papa. That would make me happy. Will you do that? And he said, sure, and then you'll have your lamp until your wedding day, and you can take that with you. And so the father called in the goldsmith, and Paranaz described what she wanted, a lamp with a stand so strong that it would hold 40 lamps, and it needs to be hollow inside. What? Yes, it needs to be hollow inside, Paranaz told the goldsmith. I want it like a little room inside. And there needs to be a door on the outside, but very hidden. So only I will know where it is. It should just look like the lamp, but I'll know which place is the door. And it should open from the inside too. Okay, can you do that? Okay, yes, I can do that. And so, that kind of job takes a while. But the goldsmith was a very good worker, and he made a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful golden lamp. And he brought it, and he set it down in her room, and she looked at it, and she looked at her papa and said, Look at that, papa. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. And so, her father thought, Ah, Paranaz is finally happy. 
Then he'll marry my, she'll marry my friend, and all will be right. Well, that sounds okay, except that is not what Paranaz had in mind. She waited and waited until one day her father was not at home. And while he was away, she went into the kitchen and got all kinds of food supplies and put them in that empty space inside the lampstand. And then she went outside to the well. She took off her shoes and put them down in front of the well, facing the well. And then she went back inside, opened that special secret door into the lampstand, went inside and pulled it shut. Clack. Just like that. Yep. Well, she stayed in there. But she had food, and her father came home, came in. Paranaz looked around. That's strange. Where is she? Asked one of the servants, have you seen Paranaz? No. She didn't go out. No, of course she didn't go out. She never goes out. Well, maybe she's outside, out in the courtyard. Hmm. Oh, maybe she's at... And that's when he came to the well, and he looked down, and he saw the shoes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Paranaz, what have you done? What have you done? What have I done to make you do this? Oh, Paranaz. And he looked down into the well, the dark, 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 dark well. Oh, Paranaz. Why didn't you tell? Oh, you did tell me. What have I done? I lost my daughter. I lost my daughter all because I would not listen to her. Oh, Paranas, I'm listening now, but it's too late. And her father walked back into the home and saw that golden lamp, and he did not want to see it ever again. And he called in the goldsmith, and he said, Goldsmith, get this lamp out of here. I do not want to see it. Keep the money. I don't care about that. Just get it out of here. And so the goldsmith took it and put it in the shop window. And one day, a prince came by and saw the lamp, saw the lamp and said, Whoa, that is something I would like in my rooms in the palace. And so the prince bought the lamp and had it brought to the palace to his special rooms. He lived with his mother and father, the king and the queen, but he had his own place within the palace, and there's the golden lamp, and he likes the looks of that. Ah, so nice. And the prince, well, he liked a lot of time alone, and he liked to eat his supper alone, and he liked to eat his breakfast alone, and he didn't want to be bothered with the servants or anyone else, and so he had his food brought in in the evening, his food for his dinner, and for his breakfast. So that way he could just wake up in the morning and have his breakfast and not worry about waiting for somebody to bring it to him. Well, you know who's in the lamp. And the lamp is in the prince's room. And now there's breakfast sitting on a table and the prince is asleep. So what happens? Yes, Paranaz opens the door very quietly and tiptoes out and eats a little of the breakfast, but not too much, but enough to keep her going. And then she goes back into the lampstand, closes the door very quietly, the next morning, the prince wakes up, starts to eat his breakfast, and says, what? What's this? Looks like some of my... That's weird. 
I don't know. The next night, he goes to sleep, and you know what Perinaz does? She sneaks out again, eats a little breakfast, and then sneaks back in. He wakes up, look, what? What is going on around here? The next evening, he moved the food around a little bit, placed it just so, so he would know if it was moved. He went to sleep, and you know what happened? Here comes Perinaz, ate a little bit, went back in. He gets up in the morning, mmm, there's definitely something going on here. I think I'll stay awake tonight. And he got in bed, and he closed his eyes, but just a little bit. And here comes Perinaz, and she sat, and she ate a little bit, and she started singing. The prince couldn't believe it. She's singing. But not long. Soon she went back into her lampstand. Oh, is she a fairy? I've got to see. The next night, he went to bed even earlier. And he waited. And sure enough, here she comes again. And she ate a little bit and sang a little bit. And the next night she was singing again. And the next night. And the next night. Mastom, 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 tiret boride Oh, he started loving those songs. Oh, I've got to talk to her, I've got to talk to her, I've got to talk to her. And the next night, when she started to go, he jumped up and said, No, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. And she turned and he said, Are you a fairy? And she shook her head and said, no, 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 I'm not a fairy. I'm a woman. My name is Perinaz. And I'll tell you my story. And she told him the whole story of why she was there. And then they talked and knocked and talked more and 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 more. They talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. Oh, it was fun talking together until the morning light. Oh, you better go back in the lamp. There she goes. All he could do all day was think about the evening when he would see her again. And the next night, 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 they spent the whole night, each night together, talking and laughing and singing. And one night, she looked at him and said, I have a song for you, a special song. Listen. And she sang. And when he heard that song, he said, oh, oh, that is love. That is love, and I need, oh, I can't sing like that. I can't give you a gift of song, but, oh, I can give you this ring, this ring, and you can wear it and look at it and know that I love you as much as your song loves me, and wear it forever. And she put on the ring, and she went back into the stand, and night after night, they sang and talked and sang and talked.
What a lovely story. Look how this is going, but it's not so simple. A servant was at the door one night, listening to the song, peeking through the door. And she talked. She told another, and another told another, and another told another, and another told another, and another told another, and it spread across, 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 all the way to the home, the palace of a princess who is supposed to marry the prince. And when this princess heard about Paranaz, she was angry. Oh, 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 I will get her. And she waited, and she waited. She didn't say anything to the prince. She waited until the prince went on a hunting trip. And while he is away, she went and talked to the prince's mother and said, oh, I've heard so much about that golden lamp. Could I maybe borrow it while the prince is away? I've heard it so beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I'll take lovely care of it and I'll bring it right back. And so, she had the golden lamp taken with her. And when she got back to her palace, she started lighting the lamps. One, two, three, four, five, on and on and on and on. One lamp after another, after another, after another. Forty lamps burning, oh, how bright and how hot, how hot the lamp. Dan got hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and inside the lampstand, Paranaz, oh no, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. She touched the, oh, burning hot, burning hot. She could not breathe. She oh, finally opened the door of the lamp and collapsed, fell down to the floor. That was it. That was it. And the princess laughed. So that's what happens. Oh, guard, wrap her up in a rug, throw her in the river. Paranaz was rolled up in a rug and tossed into the river. And you may think that Paranaz is dead, but she is not dead. She had fainted, and when the river water hit her, she woke up, and she swam for shore. And she crawled out of the water onto the land, and it so happened that a kind old man saw her and ran down and helped her up and helped her to his own home and said, your home is mine. My home is yours. Stay here, and you will be safe. And so, Paranaz stayed there with the old man. Now back in the palace, the prince returned. He was waiting, waiting. Oh, when night comes, the door opens, and I see Paranaz again. The meals were brought in, and he sat waiting, smiling. But the lamp door did not open. The lamp door did not open. He called Paranaz, come on out. I'm back, I'm back from the hunt, come on back. Come on out, come on out. But nothing happened. He searched the lamp for the, oh, there it is. He opened the little door and looked in, empty. Empty. Paranaz, where are you? And he could not sleep, and he could not eat, 
and he could not eat the next day, and he could not sleep the next day, and he could not eat and sleep and sleep and eat. He could not do that at all anymore. And his mother and father looked at him and said, son, you need to eat. You need to sleep. That's what living is, eating and sleeping and loving. You've got to do that. And he just shook his head. He just shook his head. He would not eat. He would not sleep. And the word went out. And people everywhere, oh, poor prince. I'll fix him something that he'll eat. That's what one after another said. I'll fix him something he will not be able to resist. So many fancy dinners were brought in, but the prince just looked at them and shook his head. And Perinaz got an idea. She made a soup, a delicious little soup, and she put it in a bowl, and she dropped her ring in the bowl. And she handed the bowl to the old man and said, take this to the prince. Maybe this will serve him well. And so the old man walked across the village, carrying the bowl of soup. Others looked and said, you're taking that soup in that little old bowl to the prince? You think he's gonna eat that soup? He has turned down everything. He brought it in. The prince sniffed. He said, bring me that soup. He said, bring me a spoon. He ate. Again, another dip, another, 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 and there in his spoon was the ring. And he looked at the ring and he started crying. And he looked up at the old man through his tears and he said, old man, is this the ring that Paranaz wears? And the old man said, yes, I've been taking care of her. Can you show me where she is? Yes, follow me. And the prince followed the old man all the way to the old man's house. And there she was. And there he was. And Paranaz looked at the prince, and the prince looked at the Paranaz and said, come home, come home, my Paranaz, come home. And she returned to the palace with the prince. And that's where they are now. And that's the story of Paranaz and the Golden Lamp. <laughs>